Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. Today we're going to be talking about the Tesis Zagana FC. And this is both is and isn't a Tesis Zagana FC. This is a gun show sample. And last year, John H. was kind enough to donate this to the channel in the hopes that it could be rehabilitated and reviewed. Now, there is a notation in the serial number that is a code that indicates that this is a non-firing gun. Crucial parts of the fire control system have been omitted, and there are holes bored below and in front of the chamber, so it cannot properly fire a bullet and will blow up if you try, if you somehow did manage to jury rig the firing pin. So I contacted TSIS USA, and they consulted and determined that it was not legally viable for them to convert this to a firing pistol. So it is and will remain a non-firing gun. But it intrigued me because this has a really nice double action trigger pull. And the single action is also quite nice with a very short reset for a double action, single action semi-auto. And it has other features like a ported barrel, um, cute cuts in the slide that look neato, and a good feel in the hand. And this is a service-sized handgun with a 4.6 inch barrel, and it weighs, uh, un well, of course it's unloaded, it's not really a gun, but with a magazine it weighs 33.7 ounces. And uh, it seems very, very well made. So, when the actual gun became available late last year, I talked to Rain City and we ordered one off the website, which was shipped to Rain City Shooting Center and then signed over to me in accordance with all federal, state, and local law. And um, I like it. Now, I've done a first shots video of this already, and today when I picked it up, I put another 100 rounds through it. And um, my lack of respect, let's say my lack of respect for Winchester White Box is definitely coming to a middle. <laughs> now, in the first 100 rounds, which was a wildly mixed group of ammo, including hollow points, Underwood Extreme Defenders, different types and weights of ball, the gun performed flawlessly. This time I had Winchester White Box NATO, and in 100 rounds, right at the beginning, I had two failures to extract. I'm fairly comfortable looking sideways at the ammo rather than the gun, because they happened early on and did not repeat. And what this is, is a double action, single action, semi-automatic pistol. Um, 4.6 inch barrel as noted, 33.7 ounces. And uh, really quite nice ergonomics. Decent sights. And overall, it's just pretty nice. We're going to do a deeper dive into this. But first, let me thank my supporters on Patreon. This all costs money, and your contributions help more than you know. Also, like to thank channel benefactors like John H., who provided the non-firing sample gun. So, first thing to note about this gun is that the single-action trigger is really good. It's very crisp. And the reset is really, really short. This is a gun that will be very nice for shooting quickly. As it has proven. Uh, the ports in the barrel really do seem to help. You'll note that this gun has a fairly high bore axis. And yet, despite that, it comes back on target extremely quickly. And I suspect the ports don't hurt in that regard. Uh, the sights are standard three dot sights with the front sight dot being 
quite small and deeply shadowed, so it appears off-center when you get a sight picture. Not a fan. But um, the fit and finish is excellent. And uh, we're going to go to the tabletop and dive a little deeper. Okay, we will start with a faux unboxing. As you can see, the case is really quite decent quality. Some warnings on the bottom. Um, very solid. And it says Tesis and uh, TesisUSA.com. And the legend 1993, I assume that's when Tesis was formulated in Turkey. And <clears throat> latches are quite solid. It is a lockable case for what that's worth on a plastic case. And opening things up, we can see the gun with one magazine in it, a spare magazine, and two cleaning tools, which are kind of cheap, but you know, about what you expect. Tucked away back here is the owner's manual. And the owner's manual is an owner's manual. It's got all the usual cautions right at the front and is pretty well illustrated, showing you how everything works, what all the parts are called, etc. It's it's a basic, quite well written and illustrated um, owner's manual. So the gun. in standard trim comes with two 17 round magazines so you've got a 17 plus one capacity which is pretty good this is a large gun it is eight and a quarter inches long and five and a half inches high and it's modest moderately chunky eh, probably about nine tenths of an inch wide it's the standard browning type that locks on the barrel hood. And you can see here the ports, which do make quite a mess on the barrel. But they actually seem to be useful and to serve a function. So the front sight is steel and it is easily removed and replaced. Held in by, I assume, a tiny Allen screw here. Uh, the rear sight on the actual gun is a fixed combat style rear sight. The sample gun had an adjustable sight, which I am going to steal and put on the gun. Another difference between the sample and this gun is the actual gun has hard plastic and this has neoprene. And I might steal those and put those on the gun too. So, um, it's a handsome gun, and it seems very well made. The shut lines and everything are good. There is practically zero play in the slide. The barrel is nicely fitted. It has a steel guide rod. And the hard plastic grips have texture up here, checkering here, nothing on the front strap, and you have these serrations on the back strap. Now, I say there's nothing here, but there are finger grooves, which are quite effective. And overall, the texture is quite good and provides a good solid grip. The trigger, as mentioned, have the hammer drop safety, of course. The trigger, as mentioned, is quite good. It's very smooth. It's like a good revolver trigger. And you do feel a couple of clicks here, but this is a brand new gun and I suspect those may smooth out over time because they are not present on the much handled gun show example. Although there is an audible click as you start pulling the trigger. Now the double action trigger pull is nine pounds. It's quite smooth, but there is a definite wall before it releases. So it's going to take a little bit of training not to duck that first shot down. But it's not bad at all. In fact, it's quite a good trigger overall. The single action trigger is, as mentioned, very nice. 
and it has an extremely short reset, like 1911 short, that good. Um, the controls are very easy to reach. I am not a fan of slide mounted safeties. This one's actually very easy for me to use. And of course, I don't even have to break my grip to drop the slide because I have larger hands. Now, disassembly is a total. I mean, it's just dead easy. You rotate this lever 90 degrees down and take the slide off. That is not difficult. The stainless guide rod, you just push it forward a little bit, release the non-captive spring, and then, as you'd expect, pop the barrel out the back. So, the barrel does get dirty. This is 200 rounds worth of dirt caused by the ports. And, of course, it's a standard cam-type lockup, just as you would expect. And it's quite well made and really nicely machined. The internal machining on the gun, it is dirty, so forgive me, is really quite nice. And there's really nothing lacking here in terms of uh, the quality of the machining and finishing inside. So kudos on that. And you can see the hammer drop here. And uh, the safety is ambidextrous, which is a plus. And the slide release is not ambidextrous, which really doesn't bother me. So reassembly is the opposite of assembly. It even says so in the instructions and is dead easy. Do you wanna make sure to get that compressed properly? Trying to do it while looking at the camera is harder. <laughs> and then just run it back and rotate the lever back and you are together. Now it is notable on this side, on both guns, an extension of the grip panel comes forward and this covers the action bar for the trigger which is kind of reminiscent of Beretta, except it's fully recessed into the frame. Now, other differences between these two guns. This has a two-slot Picatinny rail, and this has a three-slot. But it does have a Picatinny rail to mount a light or whatever you like under there, which is nice. So... There are very well-defined serrations here for the forward finger grip, uh, which does work on this gun better than it does on most guns. On most guns, I find my fingers slipping off. I did try it on this, even though it's not my normal operating mode, and it seemed to work really well. Those really deep serrations and slight hook work. The ergonomics, as I say, are very good but bear in mind, I have a large hand. I cannot quite reach the magazine release without shifting my grip. But frankly, I'm pretty used to that, and it's easy to train around. And of course, if you're left-handed and the slide's locked back, you can simply slingshot it on the reload. So as I say, I'm not that bothered by the lack of an ambidextrous uh, slide release, and there's not really room for one, but with the trigger bar and everything being right there. So overall, I like this quite a bit. Oh, and the magazine release looks like it might be reversible, but if it is, there's no indication in the literature that you can do so, and I don't know how that would work. So maybe, maybe not. So, very nice gun. Very nicely made, nicely fitted and finished, and shoots really, really well. There are a few reviews of these from years back kicking around on the internet because apparently these were imported by someone prior to SDS bringing them in. 
or TSIS USA, SDS, what, whatever it is. Um, and they generally seem to have gotten good reviews, and I can see why. This is a high-quality service-type pistol that's very nice to shoot with a lot of good features. Um, there are multiple versions of this being brought in with and without these port, the barrel ports and the slide cuts. There's a version with a half inch more barrel, a version called the compact with a half inch less barrel. And they're all currently on the website, $299, which is kind of crazy good. Now, of course, by the time you've paid for shipping, tax, and transfer, and all that other stuff, um, I was out the door for about 400 That's still a good price for a gun of this quality, because it does genuinely seem to be a high-quality gun, and I like it. Now, information about these is very scarce. Now, I have heard that a version of this pistol was purchased in quantity by the Pakistan military, but I have not been able to confirm that. And uh, at least not at the time of this video. And these guns were brought in because I'm told they are basically warehouse leftovers. And so they thought they might as well bring them to America and see if they could sell them. And thus they're all offered at a very good price. In fact, no matter which variant you select, it's $299 on the website. And if you're, uh, if you're up for something different and good, you could do a lot worse, especially for 400 ish dollars out the door. It, um, I like it a lot and I am going to be putting a lot of rounds through this as time goes on because I want to see how it holds up. Now, given the quality of TSIS 1911s, which is very good for the price, I suspect this is going to hold up just fine. So, it's an interesting... Oh, and I am told that SDS will stock repair parts for these guns, and they do have extra magazines available. So, it may be a bit of an orphan, but not totally, and there's always a chance that they will, if they're still making them, then they sell well, they may decide to bring these guns in on a more permanent basis, call it. Anyway, I like it a lot. I'm going to shoot it a lot because I like shooting it. Good gun, something a little different and I think pretty cool. So, hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.